What's up guys, Jordan here. Today we are joined by Lachlan Thompson, owner of Social Slingshot based in Australia, member of the Affluent Academy. And we actually interviewed him just over a year ago. And since then he has managed to double his agency revenue and have less clients sign up to his agency. So he has cracked the code when it comes to high ticket sales in his agency. And I cannot wait to dive deep into that with Lachlan today and reveal it for you guys. Now quickly, tomorrow is Friday. It's a very big day for everyone here at Affluent.co and for you guys as well. We are releasing the Affluent Academy 2022 as part of our Black Friday deal. And uh, I'm gonna be hosting a live Q&A on Instagram again, 7 p.m. GMT, that's UK time, where we can answer any leftover questions you may have about the Academy. I'm also gonna dive deep into the platform and show you the benefits, the bonuses, and just everything we've been working on over the past few months. This is gonna completely change the agency game and I cannot wait to release it and give you guys access to it. So yeah, it's exciting times ahead. Let's get started with today's interview. What's up guys, Jordan here. Today I've got a special guest for you guys. I'm joined by Lachlan Thompson from Social Slingshot. You might recognize his face because 12 months ago we did a interview on this channel. Um, in that interview, Lachlan signed 11 clients within three months. Absolutely smashed it. Just told me that he's now got 10 clients on his roster. So we want to <laughs> dig into that. Okay, I want to I want to find out what's going what's going on there. Um, so Lachlan, welcome back um, to the channel. Thank you for being here, man. Uh, can you quickly, for the benefit of people that maybe haven't watched that interview, can you make a quick introduction and let the guys know who you are and what you do? Yeah. So originally I joined the social media marketing school, which is quite a few bit years back now, and now it's the Affluent Academy. So I've been doing like SF. SMMA for a couple of years now, two and a half, probably almost approaching three early next year. Mm. So I've been doing it for quite a while. Uh, it took me a while to get my feet. Um, and then from there, sort of signed on the few first e-com clients and yeah, haven't really looked back since then. Quit my full-time job and everything due to the course. So yeah, right. that's sort of the journey. Happy days. Lovely. So how, how have things changed since our last, in, last interview? So you, you signed up with like a burst of clients and you had like in, in, was it, was it because of COVID or did you just change your abstract, your, your sales strategy? You, how did you sign up that burst of clients? Yeah. So originally I was going for dentists, physios, chiros, everything like that. And then COVID lockdowns hit, I lost my whole pipeline. <laughs> so that was like probably like hundreds of hours worth of prospecting and stuff just <laughs> going out the window overnight so i switched to e-commerce then and yeah from there we're just going 100 percent e-commerce amazing okay cool and so what was your like your sales strategy on getting those clients were you cold outreaching was it inbound what was the strategy on that yeah 100 percent cold I, don't, I think i've signed like one maybe two clients from inbound yeah. uh, so it was 100 percent cold looms uh, just sending them out and yeah, yeah, just putting my face to a name and brand and making it a bit more personalized. So yeah, that's all. Yeah, got it. Like it. So we, if we fast forward to today, like you were signing up a whole bunch of clients, big numbers, and you said to me before this call, hey, Jordan, we've actually got 10 clients on the roster at the minute as well. Um, <laughs> and my first question was, are they better quality clients? To which you responded, absolutely, yes. Yeah. So let's talk about Let's talk about that. What 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 has happened in the 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 last twelve months? What's that transition looked like? Where is your focus now? Yeah. So the early part of what this year must have been. So yeah, early part of this year, I went on and just signed a few more clients. Got super busy. Uh, couldn't really handle it all myself. Uh, so from then, I've now brought on a media buyer, a few graphic designers, a few VAs. So the team has really grown since then. And now I'm sort of just chilling. So I'll probably pretty much just chill. Uh, it's pretty busy because of Black Friday and stuff and Christmas, but sort of just chill over this period. And then next year, we'll go to that scaling phase again. So probably bring on another one or two media buyers, a few more graphic designers, things like that. So really scale up that side of the Amazing. business because we've got those processes in place now. So what, what did it look like from getting, so can you paint a picture of like these, these new clients? So what, 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 what does it look like? What's the fundamental differences between these smaller clients that are paying you a little bit of money to these larger clients? And, and did you change anything and what you were doing to, to enable you to get those high ticket clients? And I, presumably you, you could leverage case studies and stuff that you had beforehand, but what was that fundamental difference that enabled you to go from low ticket to high ticket? 
Yeah, probably a confidence thing, to be honest, and the prospecting who I was actually reaching out to. So in the past, obviously, when you're first starting out, you're like, oh, my God, a thousand bucks. No, no business is ever going to give me that. Yeah. And then the more you go through it, you're like, a thousand bucks is nothing. So you yeah, have- a bit of a mindset shift, confidence on the sales calls. Yeah. Uh, like I know I said in my last video, I just rewatched some of it. Like I had like 75 sales calls and didn't close one. Yeah. So just like being a bit more authentic and confident on sales calls really helped. And especially with those higher ticket deals as well. Yeah, and sure. just coaching them through like what they need to do sort of just a general conversation, not like hard selling or anything like that. Uh, but And the, yeah, just back to actually who I was speaking to and yeah. having conversations with. It, 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 that's so key. Like, because I, I was actually having this conversation with someone yesterday. I jumped on a, like a coaching call with, with, with a friend actually in a different business who wanted to learn like the sales strategy we use in the agency. And I was like, man, like my sales strategy is primitive as hell. I'm literally having a conversation with someone. Yeah, we have hoops that we jump through, but I'm just having a conversation with someone, just building a relationship with them. That's like the number one priority. Like I see so many agencies um, and you see gurus and stuff on this space as well, like promoting that you should have like this fancy presentation that goes through like why they're so amazing and all this. And I'm like, I, I, I don't know about you if you use one, but I, I, I don't think you need all of that right i don't think you need like uh, these in-depth salesy strategies you just need to be able to build a good relationship with someone and connect with them like i had a call with this guy um interestingly enough a sales call which i'm uploading into the academy uh next week they um we had a call with this guy with like a two call close um massive company they're doing like uh, i say massive but they're doing like 100k a month organic just purely organic no yeah. ads whatsoever i've had a facebook pixel for five years thousands of customers no influencer marketing like literally just built off the product um and so and their ads first week ads 52 times return on ad spend which is yeah. mad it's like an absolute unicorn and it's not going to be maintained yeah. but on that call, he was like, I've spoke to eight agencies in the last six weeks and you're twice as expensive than them, but you blew the socks out of all of them. And it's just because we built a good relationship and a good rapport on that call. Like you'll see when I upload it, we're just laughing, we're joking, we're just like building like this. And we didn't know each other before we got on. So I think that's a really key change. And I think you get that from the confidence in selling as well. Yeah. Yeah, like a lot of my sales calls, like I just roll out of bed onto the sales calls. Like I don't prepare for them at all. Like I used to, like I used to prepare a presentation, a little dog shit. And I used used to do that, go through everything, go through hours of preparation and things like that. But now I'm just sort of, yeah, just rolling out of bed onto the sales calls because it's like you got like a workflow that, as you said, you need to jump through some sort of hoops and get what you need out of them but yeah just relationship building is yeah super important and like like i went to build a case study deck for uh sales calls the other day but i've just been showing people on my website i wouldn't (laughs) i wouldn't even bother yeah upload it to your website i I just haven't record like a vsl or like a case study on your website I, i wouldn't bother with like a like a presentation for the actual meeting itself you just, you just don't need it. Like, you really don't. Like, you can sign up massive return on ad spend deals just based on, like, just a good relationship. So, yeah. um, oh, amazing. So, um, you said about rolling out of bed, um, jumping onto meetings. Um, but, like, obviously, the majority of people watching this right now can't roll out of bed and jump onto a meeting because you're just going to look like some scrappy bastard who's just jumped onto a sales call. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to come full circle on this. Like, this is the thing. Like, you'll see so many people who have got agencies, like, Lachlan's now got clients are paying him in excess of $7,000 a month, right? So, like, you, you, you don't just get to that point and jump on and speak to those businesses when you just just when you're just starting out and just rolling out of bed on a sales call like you have to i think you have to go through the rigorous sales strategies and you have to go through all of that to come full circle to actually understand the psychology behind everything you're saying and once you understand the psychology then you can just strip it back to bare bones so i think it's important to go through all of that as opposed to just like just jumping in and just winging it but i i I think that it's it's like anybody can tell somebody the mistakes that they've made in their life, but they have to make the mistakes themselves if they actually want to learn from them. Like you, our parents tell us our entire lives not to do this, not to do that. And we're like, I'll do what I want. And then we do it and then we learn from it. And then we tell our children the same things. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. Like I used to sit here on the script like this, like on the sales call, like good thing there wasn't Zoom back then. And they couldn't be hustling on the call. But yeah, I was definitely like that. Even in voice notes, and then even now, like I'm super more confident on like video messages and stuff like that. But back in the day, hell no, it would take me two hours to send one 10 second video message. 
<laughs> Mate, I was exactly the same now. I used to be in, I used to be in absolute shambles. So what, what does it look like? Obviously, just so, so people can so you can get an idea. You can do vague figures, but like whatever so people can get an idea of like low ticket versus high ticket. So with like the clients you had at the, beforehand, roughly how many clients did you have when we last an interview and how much money was that making you versus how many clients have you got now versus how much money is that making your agency? So we can see a contrast. Yeah, so like last year I had 11 as probably paying me yeah, 10 to 12. Yeah. And then like I've got one less client now, but I'm making double that. Nice. So it's not like a massive jump, it's double still a lot. Uh, exactly. So we can do that again next year, which we're planning to do up it again. Um, yeah, it should be good. Like, but we try we, to keep the client base down as low as possible, but get that quality in the door. It's much less work as well. Yeah. Where if you got those little clients are always asking for little things. <laughs> yeah, I, I annoying, completely but... understand that. I think that's really important is keeping the quality high, keep the client base low. We turn down the majority of people that we speak on sales calls. We offer them other solutions, but we, we it's not worth having them on your roster when you're using up then team's capacity and everything as well. Like So it's it's just yeah. not worth the, the, the mental space. But you've got people on ROAS-based deals too. Mm-hmm. So like a ROAS deal, guys, is a, is a percentage of ad spend. You charge a percentage of the money you actually make for a client. Uh, presumably that's scalable as well so as the client scale the revenue will scale without even having to sign new clients on, on, on the flip side yeah that's right and a lot of the business owners like that as well because then we're more incentivized to give give extra as well like we like we don't charge for it but we do like graphic design we do uh like website consulting as well although we don't do any of the work we can point them in the right direction because a lot yeah. of the business owners don't really understand CRO. And I just have a hard time with websites, to be honest. I think <laughs> works on websites are bloody nerds. And yeah. Um, yeah, they put too much work into those things. I can't <laughs> understand them. <laughs> That's a professional opinion, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you, you hired a media buyer on the team as well. That's a process that like a lot of people struggle with. It's like a big brick wall. So how was that process? A media buyer, guys, is that, like our equivalent of an ad specialist, Seven Tom. So like, what is the, yeah, what was that process like? What were some of the hurdles you had to jump through on that? Like, or did you just find a unicorn straight away and you, you were pretty lucky? Yeah, Indy. Yeah, <laughs> she's watching this. You'll like hearing this. But yeah, Unicorn, just straight up the bat. Like, really? I just put a post up on Upwork. Uh, I had like a little hiring BSL. So I jumped on a video, spoke a bit about the brand and got applications through. There was a lot of shit in there. Uh, but I did a few interviews and yeah, she'd quit her job because of lockdown or was looking to start working from home. She had like marketing background, science background. I was like, yep, <laughs> you, got, you want it, it's yours. So marketing yeah. and science background. Yeah. Right. That's, that's degrees, that's everything. Like I never went to perfect combo, like, like <laughs> figures and science. And <laughs> come to me, come make some potions of my client ad accounts. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So yeah, unicorn. And she actually lives a few suburbs away in Melbourne. So oh wow. Oh, uh, super close. Uh, yeah, she's been great. Yeah, I mean, you, you got lucky there, but right? <laughs> you, yeah. you got really lucky. Um, yeah, I've been speaking to a few mates and they're having really hard times um, yeah. looking for media buyers, even though they're willing to train them up or anything. So uh, if anyone's watching this, keen on just the media buying side, uh, yeah, I've got a job for you. You've, oh, you've got, you've got more that you can take on. Oh, even my mates, like other e-com. Oh, like, cool. Yeah. Like, nice. Facebook, like it's such a hard thing to find. Like I got so lucky. Media buyers hit lock. Like, you're going to regret doing that actually, man. Like you, <laughs> you're going to get a lot of DMs from a Maybe, lot. maybe just cut about. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go, cut that. Cut, cut, cut. <laughs> <laughs> so you said you got like a lot of shit coming through as well. Um, like how did you vet that? How did you how did you quantify like what was worth pursuing, what wasn't? Like because some people put really good case studies that aren't even there. So you what what was the score there? Yeah, so yeah, as I said, I did like a 15, 20 minute video, just me speaking about the business, what the role's gonna be. So that probably cut a lot of the bad stuff out. Mm. And then yeah, sort of if they didn't make any sense English wise on the application, uh, they were just straight out the window as well. Because you need to be able to write ad copy. Yeah, of course. Um, and then yeah, sort of that just weeded out a lot. And then I just jumped on a few interviews and yeah, just got to know the person and yeah, whether they'd be a good fit or not. It's it's always a a personality thing, I think. Like I you can 
Although it's great if you can find someone who already has like a marketing background, like that's that's second to the fact that like because you, you can teach someone skills, but you can't teach someone personality. Like you can try and mold someone's personality, but from my experience, it just really really doesn't really doesn't work. So like we've always hired based on how like how well we think we get on with a person. Like there was a, literally we made a hiring decision about a month ago, and Joe was like, "I'm really torn between these two people." I was like, "Who would you enjoy working with the most?" And it just came down to that um because ultimately you have to work with that person day in day out and like that person like has to get on with you and you want that person to become like a friend within the business and you want that person to be someone you can nurture and they'll, they'll stay with you long term and has goals to do that but you yeah. can't it doesn't matter if someone someone could be the most skillful media buyer in the world but if they don't get on with you you're just going to end up resenting them and they're, they're probably going to go elsewhere and they'll probably feel the same way yeah yeah for sure and yeah that's pretty much all it was was yeah i think i'd get along with her like she didn't have any ad account experience whatsoever mm. and yeah sort of put her through a few courses and then just over the shoulder learning through zoom nice. that's how yeah. i trained her so, over yeah. the shoulders good we, we do like a tuesday and a thursday ads chat and joe will go yeah. through every single ad account in front of all of the ad specialists and then they can all yeah. learn from each other and we've had uh, Lucas actually recently from Hanby Media. Um, he he's, he's hired a new ad specialist, and we we chucked his ad specialist in on these them team meetings, and he's he's literally up to speed within like two months because he's just like chased, he's just like watching and just learning and just like understanding and writing things down. So it's a great way to do yeah. it by like micromanaging a bit. So, but but what are you? You mentioned to me earlier that you're you're not really doing much outbound sales at the minute. You're kind of sitting pretty, scaling up the clients. Like, what are you doing right now in the business? If, if you if you if you if you've got the the service delivery nailed down, what are you doing, Lachlan? What's it? What's, what's your? Uh, yeah, so I still am doing outbound, but I don't know whether you're founded or not. No, you probably don't do much outreach or whatever. But I'm still <laughs> doing personally, a, but we do. <laughs> yeah, I um yeah, I'm still doing a bit of outreach, email and stuff. So. But the competition's so high right now. Email is like super competitive. Clients are just going delete, 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 delete all the time. Um, so yeah, just sort of trying to crack that. Um, I'm I need starting to, to do my latest script as well. Yeah, do it. Sorry, I interrupted you. I I, I said I, I need to send you my latest script because we're actually we're, 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 we've nailed it. I'm actually uploading it into the academy next week, but um, right. we've got Give a really good script. I'll that. send you the latest <laughs> sequence. What were, you, what were you just moving on to? You said, apart from me. Yeah, so starting to build a bit of a Facebook group as well. So for the clients that aren't quite a good fit or a bit newer, uh, cool. putting them in sort of like the learn ads that you have. Uh, and then, yeah, sort of building up my personal brand a bit more as well, because I find that really helps. Yeah, for sure. But building a personal brand really, really helps with like that credibility. I often find that what, what, we, what we did is we... I mean, we've got a new uh, appointment session, the, the team, Vincent, Vincent, you're watching this. Um, Vincent's been smashing it. Like we signed up four clients from his leads um, last week. So like in seven yeah. days, he's done really good. And he only started two weeks ago. Um, and he, yeah, he's been doing really, really well, focusing on email and DMs. Um, and we've been tweaking scripts. We've been playing around and we've just been like messing around. We're, like we've done this, this one, I won't reveal it on here, but again, I'm going to put it in the Academy next week. Um, we revealed, uh, we, we changed one subject line and we were getting like 40% open rate on emails and we changed it. And then we got a 90% over rate. Uh, we're getting a 90% open rate on all of our emails now. And it's such a primitive subject line. Like it's not even like some fancy thing. It's just like one little tweak. And then it's, it's, it, we, we're getting like huge open rates. But then I was handing off like the sales call process to other people in the team. And like our conversion rates just were nowhere near as high as they used to be. And I've recently, like the last like two or three weeks, probably last yeah last three weeks i've been taking all of the sales calls again so i'm doing like two or so two calls a day on average maybe yeah two and yes monday we did three but then like I'm, I'm finding that like because i'm speaking to people because of the personal brand because everything else when they speak to me it's like oh shit like i'm actually speaking to to, to jordan the owner of the company as opposed to like because yeah. i don't know why they think even if you've got like i don't know like a couple of thousand followers like they think that you as the owner of the business are more important and then they're surprised to speak to you and then you, you almost have this leg up when it comes to selling so yeah 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 i don't i don't quite understand that because i'm not going to hire someone that i think is shit <laughs> like i've hired them because i believe in them that they can do their job so mm -hmm. why not have a chat to them <laughs> like, yeah. i don't understand it 100%. but it definitely does help and yeah human psychology i guess yeah how are you how are you building the brand what what kind of platforms are you are you trying to build on at the minute uh, just Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, it's a bit harder, but like some friend requests out to people with similar interests and things like that. So yeah, just trying to grow it that way. 
the Facebook group thing's interesting. Can you talk us through that? Like, what do you, so you're, you're building a Facebook group, presumably for your target audience, so like econ businesses, and yeah. you, what, providing value to that group and upselling, trying to upsell them onto the service? Yeah, and just putting value in there and, you know, if they come full circle and jump on the service or whatever. But a lot of the people in there at the moment are the smaller e-commerce stuff. So hopefully once we start to build that over time, some of the bigger fish will filter through and yeah, see what eventuates from it. But it keeps me a bit more accountable as well to posting some content because <laughs> once you start signing up for clients, you get a bit lazy with that. It's easy to get complacent when you start to build the team. Like when you have the team, it's easy to just sit back for a while and enjoy it. Like how's, how's, how's the quality of life been? Like have you, have you upgraded your lifestyle? Have you just allowed yourself to stack money in the business? Like because obviously you were like kind of like, like the, the six figure point before now you're at the multi six figure point, right? We put these labels on it on, in the online space, but um, yeah. How's, how's, how's that kind of sitting with personal life? Yeah. Melbourne's been a pleasure to live in. <laughs> <laughs> so we've just been locked down the whole time. Like we only just come out of like lockdown, like a few weeks ago. Oh. And uh, so yeah, that hasn't been, that great anyway. personal life. And, no, hasn't been that great, but uh, actually moving house, uh, at the end of the year so moving in with my girlfriend so out of a share house for the first time which is pretty pretty sick nice. um, it'd be good to live by ourselves yeah <laughs> like the housemates but don't get me wrong um, yeah living by yeah. myself is something you have to lock down out. with you have to lock down with other people as well yeah 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 <laughs> okay fair yeah. i'd probably end up yeah. tearing people's hair out at that point <laughs> exactly right you can't see off screen with the whole there's a bed there and everything like have my own office things like that like i'm able to afford that now so um yeah it should be good next year yeah amazing happy days get out of lockdown get your life back it's like seeing yeah. I, was, I was saying to lockdown before it's like seeing this it's like seeing like a, a time machine on, on on zoom because like we were in this position like a year ago and now i'm like ha ha ha, ha i've got a life and you don't yeah it's exactly right i think on the last one i was like we're coming out of lockdown but obviously we re-entered it yeah. so oh god yeah it's no it's not good when well when you get out of it you can start enjoying a bit now i imagine you haven't been spending an awful lot whilst being in lockdown so we uh no, all in all into the business so yeah that reinvesting yeah. everything back so talking yeah. of like reinvesting everything back what's the plan now in the business what's where, where, where do we go from here what's the the kind of the the, the short-term plan and the long-term plan with, with where we're going with the agency yeah so short term just handle the clients over black friday christmas like i said i'm still doing outreach but if a client comes on we'll be really like sort of overloading ourselves so i'm not too stressed if nobody comes on board between now and the end of the year let's say like super good client um, and then next year, sort of, uh, I've already lined up an SDR, so sales development rep to come on and handle outreach for me because mm -hmm. I'm like doing outreach, but I'm not really controlling anything or pushing myself to any sort of targets or anything like that. So she has sort of a un another unicorn, <laughs> phenomenal background in sales and everything like that as well. So yeah. I've been extremely lucky. So uh, just due to COVID, wanted to go over. Nice. I live with their boyfriend, work from home sort of set up. So uh, <laughs> maybe COVID's been a blessing in finding those people. <laughs> nice. Cool. Happy days. Um, wicked, man. Was that, was that your short-term plan or was there, was there a long-term plan in there as well? Oh, yeah. So that's sort of like, yeah, short-term, mid-term. Let's start next year and then, yeah, sort of just build up the team, keep scaling, yeah. get some Scale bigger fish, like get some of those Joe Hyde budgets going take it from a thousand just whack on to 20 grand on the daily budget <laughs> do, do, do you have an exit strategy do you do you want to save in the agency or do you have like an exit strategy like in the long-term future do you would you like to sell the agency have you have you thought about that side of things no i haven't really thought about it to be honest <laughs> well, <laughs> just start uh, an mc <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I, I, I didn't ask actually because I, I had a company yesterday literally in my local city that like, asked to offer to buy like the agency and i didn't like i hadn't had it evaluate, evaluated but I won't, I'm not, by the way, guys, your jobs are safe. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not selling the <laughs> agency right now. Uh, but a lot of agencies start up with the, because it's such a, an easy business to, well, I say not, it's not an easy business to start. No business is an easy business to start. But yeah. um, because technically speaking, you don't need an awful lot apart from education. Um, lots of people use this as their way to get into like the kind of the, the, the online space to then fund other companies as well. So many people kind of join in with, with an exit strategy. I think long term, I'll probably exit. Um, for sure, like with the agency, maybe like if we scale up to like 
well, not if, when we scale up to like seven figures a month, but then like we'll, we'll see what happens. That's our plan for now. It's like scale to seven figures a month as quickly as possible with the agency, uh, which is definitely like it's mega possible with like big ROAS deals because like we've got one client that pays like over 50K a month in a minute just on like a one ROAS deal and, and counting. And the next thing we've been doing is we've been signing up clients on 10% of revenue deal instead. So we're actually getting revenue minus ad spend because obviously tracking is so messed up. So we're getting yeah. people on, on revenue. And then further from that, it's equity. And, and then we kind of build a portfolio from there. But at some point, I think I'd like to sell the agency because it's a, it's a, it's a business that requires a lot of work. Like unless you hire like a managing director and you completely exit that way, it's a company that takes a lot of work long term. So, um, so we'll see. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do like a, like a, a, a 10 mil, 100 mil exit. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. It's sort of like I, I joke about to my girlfriend, I'll have a million bucks by 30 sort of thing. Uh, but I think that's quite modest at the moment, the way things are going. So we'll see how we go longer term. Sure. But at the moment, I haven't really thought about any of that stuff. Yeah, fair, man. That's the key. You keep your head into what you're doing right now and just keep it going because it's working. You, you doubled your revenue in the last 12 months. So that's pretty good by any business concerned. And I think a lot of us, I actually often... I often like think about this and my accountant always says, oh, your, your growth's been amazing this, this quarter. And I'm like, ah, oh, we only grew like 50%. And, like, and mm-hmm. I, then you look at like other companies and like, and statistically look at other companies and the companies grow like 20%, like 10% or whatever. Like where's like an agency, you can just like keep flipping the revenue and stuff. Like, I think we often take that for granted because of like the way we've started it. So yeah, for sure, like a million pounds or a million dollars or whatever, that's, that, that's a very achievable goal. Um, yeah, for sure. And like, even speaking to e-commerce businesses, they don't like have profit margins and they're like, some of them are like scraping 20% and you're like, what the hell? I spoke to my accountant the other day and I was around 60 and I was angry. <laughs> 20% of <laughs> boo <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. man. laughs> but like, it's so much more scalable and yeah, you can get that growth so much faster yeah. than a lot of other businesses. For sure. For sure. Okay, Lachlan, thank you so much for, for joining me today here, man. Um, if people want to follow you, you said you're building a personal brand. Um, if people want to mm-hmm. check you out, they want to continue, like has anything changed from last week, year? Do we have the same links? If not, what, are the, what kind of what are the platforms you're focusing? You said Facebook and Instagram, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, yeah, is there anything else you want to plug? Uh, no, just my personal profile. Uh, so block on Thompson on Facebook and then you, you sort of find your way around. Uh, just, just stalk me a bit. i <laughs> go through the content, see what you like. And yeah, I know last time I did one of these videos, uh, my DMs blew up. So if anyone needs any help or whatever, um, yeah, just hit the DMs and I'll try to get back to as many people as nice. possible. Nice. So, happy days. Yeah. yeah. It was all the community that helped me grow. So yeah, happy to give back where I can. Amazing. Thank you, man. Okay, Lachlan, thank you so much, bro. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Um, we'll probably check in again in another 12 months. I'm expected a minimum of 40k revenue. In fact, let's, let's, let's set some targets. 50k revenue a month, but by the time we next speak, that's the, that's the minimum target. But in, but in 12 yeah, no, months. I was, I was, I've already had uh, 50k is already up there. So is next year, there? I'll be- yeah, yeah, it's been up there all year. I don't know whether you no, can see it on the camera or not. You, you can do that with one good client. Believe me, I didn't realize the client that pays 50K was going to pay 50K when you sign them up. Their service charge was 2K. The uh, return on the rise deal was 10%. And then all of a sudden, Joe's messaging me like, bro, this client is blowing up. And and, and we're there. So that's, that can that's crazy. Like that. That's one conversation. Yeah. Cool. yeah, um, Yeah, I already have plans to yeah, hit AEK. So uh, hold me to that. None of those small targets. Love it. We get 80K. All right, look, I'll I'll catch up with you soon, man. Guys, I hope you enjoyed Uh, this. Subscribe as well and go check out Lachlan. Follow him. Yeah. Thank you so much. And yeah, I'll speak to you soon.